yeah so uh, so in the rush to keep to the time and also maybe open this up for conversation i left out a lot of sections that uh, you know akhil reminded me of and i i think a category that akhil uh, said the returnees is an extremely important category in the entire trajectory of uh, citizenship and it figures differently in different regimes of citizenship the first regime of citizenship the returnee is a very contested category you know people who you know made the decision to go to pakistan and later decided to come back you know of all the categories you know people domiciled people domiciled and born you know the diaspora the the people who migrated from pakistan to india the returnees was the most contentious and it was a contentious category because the question of allegiance and loyalty that it was assumed you no know, would be would was truncated when the decision to leave india was made made the returnee a suspect category you know which is why when they returned to india on permits post 19 july 1948 all the returnees were considered within the uh, the discussion in the constituent assembly debates to be a category that was to one was to be wary of so the returnee within that framework was a suspect category uh, the returnee you know in the context of liminal citizenship however was a different category altogether you now the category of returnee was those citizens who were part of who were indian citizens but residing in the enclaves situated within the territorial sovereignty of bangladesh so therefore it was these citizens who were displaced when they made the decision to come to india and population and territory was exchanged so and and you now the people residing in bangladeshi enclaves within the indian territory were just absorbed in the territory as populations that became new citizens so the returnee in this context was a category that became an indian category indian citizen through return under section 7 of the constitution of india act in the citizenship of india act which is you no know, a category which gets citizenship through absorption of territory you no know? so it's a goa for example no when absorbed in the indian territory became indian citizens so indians returning to india became indian citizenship through return yet again under section 7 of the citizenship law but these returnees it was assumed would be absorbed and therefore there is you no know, through in the field work that i did in kuch bihar particularly you know the three camps din hata haldibari and mikli ganj now one got to know about the sense of as akhil pointed out the category that i've used of split citizenship you no know, where there was a great sense of loss and nostalgia not that it was not present in the chit dwellers who said no the one day we get up and we become you know indian citizens we were bangladeshi citizens earlier and and those you no know, the micro processes of being citizens for the chit dwellers no living a life of sometimes deception in order to avail welfare etc and then the returnees who suffered split citizenship because of what they left behind and you no know, the the kind of uh, expectations that they had with the indian state were not fulfilled apart from the fact that they become documentary citizens so they have the aadhar card they have the epic card and they all voted for the first time and they the promise and anamika tells me she's done her field visit more recently so those who were living in camps are now in the flats that have been made for them but they don't have ownership of those flats so the the uh, this dissociation from land that is lost and for the chit dwellers the land that they had been cultivating for long and which was there through oral you no know, kind of community and understanding that this is where they've you know been living and tilling and that's their livelihood associated with land you now the the exchange of territory and if the the new terminology the land you know, becomes khatiyan so that's the 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 land which is of the state and therefore they need to then prove that this is their land so so the returnees were configured differently now in 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 the context of federalism it's uh, the if if you recall the debates within the parliament 
on the CAB in December 2019. The Rajya Sabha is where the CA was passed with a very narrow mar margin, no? and, and, and those debates were very, very interesting. Uh, they reflected on the way in which governments and states responded to the CAA and you know, passed you know, uh, uh, resolutions opposing the CAA in some contexts, the NPRC, CAA, CAA and NRC in other contexts. Uh, however, having said that, and of course Kerala, you know, uh, ha, ha, Tamil, yeah, no, Kerala also filed an affidavit among the only states that did. So there is you know, a way in which the, the, the you know, federal processes uh, unleashed you know, a resistance to the CAA. However, if one was to think about federalism and CAA, and, and by the way, the Assam Accord actually ceded the power of deciding citizenship you know, from the state to the central government. So the central government would issue certif citizenship certificates. So if we, was to, we were to talk about uh, federalism and citizenship, and to also think about the bill that you know, has been just passed by the Jharkhand government, no, 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 and and also Kashmir, for example, you know, the idea of local residence and how what local residence means in these states, and whether therefore the replication of same model of inclusion and exclusion that is that exists within the national space is replicated in the same modular form in the states, whether that would be the federal context that we are talking about, and and therefore to Akhil, if we were talking about federal federal processes and federal contexts in which one was to think, one could possibly think about citizenship as something that would be specific to non-national spaces, whether those non-national spaces would be democratic, you know, and then therefore that's a question that we need to perhaps ask. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you know, when I mentioned about federalism, uh, you know, Okay. All right. Um, you know, you know when, when we are debating, and you have, as I said, it is only in the last chapter, recalling citizenship, the issue of federalism came up. In the entire book, or even in the introduction, federalism didn't figure. But when you look at from the perspective of Northeast India, Article Four and Article Eleven. Article Four is about you know creating new states, renaming them, changing the borders. You know. That has proved to be very critical. And when you look at Assam movement, you know, one of the important ideologues of the movement, Professor Deguprasad Burua, who happened to be a HOD of my department and also became vice chancellor at the point, he was in RCB, a Revolutionary Communist Party of India, a left progressive person, but then became an ideologue of Assam agitation. And Assam agitation targeted the left liberal, left progressive, you know, along with the tribal and the immigrants. You know, for him, you know, this is an issue of citizenship. And how can citizenship entirely be a unitary exercise of the parliament? Article 11 particularly. And that is why I mentioned that, that is why I talked about that, you know, entire debate on citizenship. The issue of federalism hasn't figured uh, prominently and comprehensively, it has figured only in terms of you know resistance that has mm -hmm. come up against CA from the non-NDA or non-BJP ruled states. I think that needs to be filled up, not necessarily by Professor mm -hmm. Rai, you know, whoever are working on citizens. <laughs> this is one issue. The second is NRC and CA. As I said, CA, CAA. <laughs> That needs to be, uh, you know, great. You know, if you look at a uh, all India scenario, then NRC and CA or CAA are both, you know, non-exclusive, inclusive, exclusionary, parochial. You know, you can give any term, you know, genophobic, genophobic. But if you look at Assam's experience, the NRC and CA are entirely two different processes and that that's interesting that needs to uh, be located in the local history i'll just give you a few examples and i'll not elaborate it in 1980 1979 some education started in 1980 february in the pages of epw there was an article published written by professor hidden gohai 
the title of the article was Kajelok Sobnezim, and that generated a debate, very comprehensive debate on Assamese nationality question that was named as Little Nationalism Turned Chauvinism. Now, the lead article was written by uh, Professor Amolindu Goha, who had also written the famous book Planta Rashtu Saras, and that is the only book on you know the political history of Assam, colonial of, of the colonial period. Uh, so, if you look at the debate, Professor Sanjeev Borwa, who is in Bard College, he contested both Hidden Gohai and also Amolendu Goha, pointing it out that you shouldn't see the movement only in uh, from the perspective of the violence that it generated. You also need to look at uh, the movement from the perspective of kind of suppression, kind of atrocities that a smaller nationality faced. So his article was titled as Tangled Nationality Question. It's not Kajelov or it's not hegemony, it's not xenophobia. Xenophobia, I don't remember whether he used the term or not. Now, look at Professor Hiren Gohai, called it Kajelov chauvinism, defended NRC, and hmm. Professor Sanjeev Borua, defending a Samo bank, calling it a tangled nationality question, in a way discarded NRC. I think this is also locational. Uh, Professor Hiren Gohai, who has defended NRC, he is called Zatib Druhi in Assam, pro Bangladeshi, pro immigrant, pro Bengali, and called xenophobic by those who are critiquing NRC. I think this is important. These are the differences. I myself is dependent. And I was talking to an, uh, Professor Roy yesterday. Why have I defended it? Remember in the art, in the Supreme Court of India, when this writ petition came, there had two provisions, two different angles. One is, based on 1971 as the cutoff, you go for preparation, updating of NRC. The second one, and also more important, that nullify 1971, hmm. make it unconstitutional, which has gone to uh, the uh, constitution bans, which has not given body. We were so apprehensive because during the Assam agitation also, this was very important, whether it will be 1971 or 1951. 1951 was the, you know, the movement, people, movement groups were insisting on, make it 1951, because in the constitution, 1948, 19 July is the cutoff, and why are you making 1971 for us? But because of the circumstances, there's, uh, you know, Professor Gohai, left political parties, many other progressive forces say that, no, you cannot alter history now. These people have come, there was a specific situation, let us accept 1971. 1971 was legitimized by these people, and also for that they were threatened, even were beaten up on the street. Now they are defending 1971, very apprehensive if the constitution tomorrow, the constitution bench tomorrow says that 1971 is unconstitutional. It doesn't go along with the constitutional provision or citizenship provisions for the country as a whole. What will happen if you make 1951? I think situation will be extremely volatile, violent in the state of Assam. So there are different positions, locational positions. Also remember that the people, immigrant Muslims, you know, they have always been under suspicion. They were suspected citizenships. And now see if their names have been entered, have got their entry into the citizen. And now see, so they are coming out of that shadow. So there was a growing consensus. Remember, this incumbent government has therefore delegitimized the NRC. They are not accepting NRC. They have rejected NRC. They are asking for 100% re-verification of NRC. So why, what I'm suggesting is that if I see from my position, so NRC is something different. We are defending NRC on different counts. And many people are critiquing NRC from some different vantage points. But we have other propositions. Just I'll sum it up. Assam movement started in 1979. The you know, demand was 1951, 28 years gap. 1985, Assam Accord was signed, accepted 1971, 14 years gap. 2019, 
you are updating NRC 1971 48 years gap these are quite impossible you cannot make somebody illegal of you now after 48 years of the stay in the state so we have to move ahead and our position has been that we have to create a consensus we have to create a debate let's make 1971 as the constitutional safeguards for the people living in Assam and make everybody who have got entry and into the and who had applied for NRC now there's a figure 3 crore 3.3 3 crore population in the country Sarbananda Sunwal for example didn't see Pelista where they when the first draft was about to be published he appealed to the people of Assam calling that 3.3 3 crore population of this state it is the responsibility of the government to protect their life liberty you know property and so on and so forth now what where, where do you get this figure 3.3 3 crore it's not census figure it is the number of applicants who applied for NRC so our suggestion that make everybody whoever have applied for NRC make them the legitimate citizens of the country and make 1971 the cut of date for giving constitutional safeguards so that has been our position okay thank you all right